in this video. I want to say tell something more, show some insight in how a field effect transistor works. And then I mean a small signal field effect transistor like the BF256A. It's an NFET. And here are the pin connections and here is the schematic. It's a demo schematic anyway. Uh, you see here say uh, a few very important things. That is at first here the potentiometer that um, gives the uh, field effect transistor its voltage. It's an NFET so it needs a positive uh, voltage on its drain. Here's the source and when you say study such a circuit could be that you see here for instance in the as a source resistor 10 kilo ohms or 1 kilo ohm so that's a factor of 10. Both things can work. And again, when you look at circuits with NFETs, you see all kinds of, say, input capacitors, and then I mean especially the value, 100 nanofarad here, and here uh, also 100 nanofarad or 1 nanofarad, that is 1000 picofarad, so there's an enormous range here in the input so the output capacitor and the input capacitor. And I've used by purpose in this demo video a capacitor of 100 nanofarad that is 0.1 microfarad because such a capacitor can let pass say all the audio frequencies between say 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz. So I made this circuit, test circuit, with that field effect transistor, the BF256A. It's all practice, by the way. And here again the schematic, the test schematic. I have connected it to a... Um, oscilloscope at the end here, the oscilloscope, and I have connected it to my sine wave generator. When you follow, have followed my channel, you will surely know this circuit, etc, etc. So what I'm doing now is testing this setup uh, between say 20 Hz and 20 kHz. And I uh, say here that you can use this circuit both as an amplifier but also as an impedance transformer and that is in fact say the best thing to do and then I mean when you have for instance here a coil, a radio coil, you can use this as a um, high frequency radio coil amplifier because of the fact that the impedance here on the gate is so very high uh, it will not damp the coil and you can in that case uh, omit this one mega ohm resistor and you can even connect here directly to the gate a coil say for instance such a coil this is a 455 kilo cycles coil but any coil can be connected directly to the gate of this N FET. So, uh, anyway, uh, this is a, a kind of impedance, the one mega ohm resistor acts as a kind of impedance, etc. etc. So, let's see what this circuit can bring when we send in, in this case, frequencies between 20 Hz and 20 kilohertz. Uh, it also acts as an impedance transformer in this case because the impedance from the gate to ground is extremely high. Anyway, 
I don't have to say that again. Anyway, uh, here is my oscillator. Let's. So, this is perhaps interesting to show. We are now in the uh, 39 hertz up to 200 hertz range. And when the, say, the input voltage to that field effect transistor gets too high, you surely see distortion that's completely logical also with BGT transistors, uh, bipolar junction transistors. You have exactly the same problem. Anyway, so let's bring down the input level a little bit. So here we have that pure sine wave. Most important thing is, of course, what will happen when we turn this potentiometer here, giving that and fed more, more voltage. Anyway, doing that now, turning the pot meter here, let's see what happens. So, no amplification here, distorted amplification here. And here, undistorted amplification, and, well, I can go to 12.5 volts. Let's see what happens when we get to 18 volts or so. Now we are on 18 volts, still undistorted. Well, that's good, I think. Good property of this circuit. Uh, the schematic again for a small moment. Let's see what this circuit can bring on higher frequencies. We now go to 4, that's uh, 3 kilocycles up to 15 kilocycles. Of course, I have to adapt the time base of the oscilloscope. Small distortion here, by the way, we are on 18 volts, so I now go back to 12 volts. And the fact that you see the same distortion has everything to do, say, with the voltage that is given to the small signal field effect transistor. And that voltage is regulated here, so now it's on its maximum, I'm gonna put that down. And we will surely see somewhere, well, this is the voltage to the field effect transistor. Uh, well, of course, also the voltage, the input voltage out of the signal generator plays a very, very important role in the distortion. This is a clipping of that high frequency audio signal in the order of perhaps 8 kilocycles anyway. So we have to bring the output level of the sine wave generator down. And here we have a very pure amplification again. So what are the conclusions? Such a circuit is of course sensitive to say the different input voltages here in terms of AC voltages and also sensitive to the say the biasing of that N uh, field effect transistor and that bias is set here and in a certain way also here with that one mega ohm resistor you can see it here and by the way it's not a one mega ohm but it is a one point 2 mega ohm resistor. Anyway, that was more or less all to tell. You can use this circuit for radio applications, like I thought, even when the coil, input coil, is directly connected from the gate to, in this case, the minus. Also, for audio applications, when you need a very, very high input impedance here, could be, for instance, that you have here a filter consisting of uh, capacitors, resistors, etc. 
and this is in that way say the best circuit to not damp the properties of such an audio filter and this it's quite logical uh, because the gate here has an endless input impedance thanks for watching pen over somewhat and well there are many videos on my youtube channel where i've used this setup for say a front end of a radio circuit where here there is the tuning coil for short wave medium wave etc etc uh, well this is i think a kind of ideal circuit to do experiments with again thanks for watching beautiful amplification here switch back to another frequency could be of course that in that case we don't see such a beautiful say a wave could be of course but anyway well let me adapt the volume a little bit so again on this frequency band 3 that is uh, 300 hertz to 1.9 kilo hertz there is a possibility of a very very proper amplification and then I mean linear amplification of the input signal thanks for watching